hands together and we know the word. If you know the word, if you ought to be a man, you can give God a shout. Thank you for it. 
Lord, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life that we could have life. Father, we thank you that we are born again. How many can say that with me this morning? That we're thankful that you're born again. That your name is written in the book of life. That you have eternal life. And this life is in your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for it this morning. But God, we lose your word to go forth here today. Not only in this place, but in every place. We lose the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. We lose the goodness of God for us on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree that 2022 is going to be a greater year for us than we've ever seen. More than what we've ever had, what we've ever known. We refuse to live in the past. Father, in the name of Jesus, we choose to forget those things that are behind. And Lord God, we are reaching forth to the things that are before us. In the name of Jesus, Father, we speak in faith that we are healed this morning. Lord, we speak in faith that we are delivered this morning. Lord, that we are re-established this morning. That it's working together for our good this morning. It's getting better for us right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we refuse to have pumped out heads. We refuse to complain. But Father, we choose to trust in the Lord. We choose to do good. For your word says, Verily we shall be fed. Hallelujah. David said one day that I'm old, but I've been young. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken. God has seen begging bread. Lord God, thank you that we're not beggars. Thank you, Lord God, that you got greatness in store for us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we receive your bounty this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, thank you again. We bless your name forevermore. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on to give God a hand clap of praise on this morning. We're going to get excited and say Jesus with the cavalry and rose in three days. But we're going to be excited today just because he both was born. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he reigns forever yeah. and ever. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together, yeah. yeah. Come on and just celebrate our, our king who was born in a manger. Hallelujah. My God reigns. My God reigns. My God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name.
Come and clap your hands for the precious Lamb of God. Oh, come on, you all can be begging in there. Come on and clap your hands for the Lamb of God. Come on, if you love the Lord today, I need you to clap your hands for the precious Lamb of God. We're talking about the baby that was born to save. We're talking about the Savior of the whole world. I need you to clap your hands and make some noise in the sanctuary. Oh, come on, God. to see that all of the young people pull together to get this done. So you all can get excited about that. And the reason why I'm excited because everybody that I asked was so willingly, able, and ready to get it done. You know, <laughs> the pandemic threw a loophole and a curve off for everybody, so we had to adjust, right? So to see the excitement on our young people's face, to see that we were able to get something done and be able to do something that we've done before, that we haven't done in a couple of years, it just brings joy and excitement to my heart. So if you all just please clap your hands again and just clap your hands and make you feel welcome. Some of them are nervous because they haven't been up here before, but I'm just excited that they're able to come together and celebrate the reason for the season, which is the birth of Jesus Christ. So I ask that when they do come up here, you all would just celebrate them and just make them feel welcome and make them feel appreciated and help them break this nervousness. Because again, these are our babies, right? They can be in the streets. They could have not showed up. They could have chose to be doing other things, but they are here today. And we're going to put this program on and we hope that you all get into it with us and be able to celebrate the reason for the season. And may one more time, clap your hands for New Genesis U. Christmas. But what is the real meaning of Christmas? Is it the gifts on the tree, the lights in the windows, the cars in the mail, turkey dinners with family and friends, snow in the yard, stockings hanging in the living room, and shouts of Merry Christmas to those that pass us in the streets? Is that really Christmas? We think that's just a part of it embodied in the definition of the true meaning of Christmas. The true meaning of Christmas is love. John 3.16 through 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son unto into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. The true meaning of Christmas is the celebration of this incredible act of love. Amen. The real Christmas story is the story of God becoming a human being yeah. in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why did God do so? This, this, why did God do such a thing? Because He loves us. Why was Christmas necessary? Because he, we needed a Savior. Amen. 
Why does God love us so much? Because he loves because he loves it itself. Why do we celebrate Christmas each year? Out of gratitude for what God did for us, we remember his birth not giving each other gifts, worshiping him, and being con conscious of the poor and less fortunate. God loved his own and provided a way, the only way, for us to spend eternity with him. He gave his son to take our punishment for our sins. He paid the price in full, and we are here for con condemnation when we accept the, the, the free gift of love. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, God, Christ died for us. With this in mind, Christmas can be a season of great joy. It is the time God showed us great love. It can be a time of healing, renewed strength. Sure, enough, enjoy the season, be, but remember to rejoice as well. After all, the true meaning of Christmas is a celebration of God's ultimate gift. The birth of Jesus Christ, the, the child of God. Amen. Thank you. some Holy Ghost crazy noise right now. Let me hear
Oh, oh, oh. 
Now, one more time, one more time for them. Y'all don't know the big story. <laughs> You all enjoyed the program so far. New Genesis youth are coming to you. We are almost at the end of the program. New Genesis youth are getting ready to present to you. The Nativity Story, The Greatest Gift of All. The Nativity Story is the most profound and life-changing moment that would occur in all of the world's history. Almost 2,000 years ago, a young Jewish woman from the town of Nazareth named Mary was visited by an angel named Gabriel. Gabriel told her that she would have a son named Jesus and that he would be the son of God. At this time, Mary and Joseph had pledged to be married and soon would. When Mary told Joseph, he was hurt and confused because he did not believe Mary. The angel Gabriel visited Joseph and told him that Mary would be pregnant from the Lord and that she will have a son named Jesus who will save the people from all their sins. Hello, Mary. I have great news. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord, for you shall give birth to a son, and you shall call him Jesus. I have to serve the Lord, and his will be done. My will be done. For God shall overshadow you with his power, and you shall give birth to the Messiah, the Son of our Most High God. Do not be afraid, Mary. Your baby boy will be the savior of the whole world. He will be the king of Jacob's people. He will be king of kings, and so shall his kingdom live forever. Do not be afraid, for nothing is impossible with God. I'm the Lord's servant. Let everything you said happen to me. Mommies and daddies always believe that their little angel is special indeed and if you
So Mary and Joseph began to travel down to Bethlehem because of an order from the Roman Emperor, emperor that a census or record of all people be taken in their hometown. After traveling pregnant on a donkey for several days, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem and were told that there were no places to stay. Mary and Joseph continued their journey and came upon the stable. They settled down on the hay where many animals were sleeping. It was at this time Mary and Joseph would witness God's power and promise being fulfilled. In a stable, a manger filled with hay, there they would receive a baby boy who would save the entire world. It was at this moment Jesus was born. An angel soon appeared to the shepherds who were watching their flocks in the fields near Bethlehem. The angel told them the good news of the birth of the Savior and Messiah, Jesus Christ. The shepherds immediately went seeking to find the newborn king. After some time, three wise men saw a brilliant star in the sky that rested over where Jesus was born. The three wise men traveled from a distant eastern country to find the new king. The wise men continued to Bethlehem and found Jesus right where the star had pointed. They knelt and worshiped the Savior and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Where's the baby, the king of the Jews? We have been following the star in the east. You want to give him gifts and worship him. I brought the baby French. I brought the baby gold. I brought the baby here. Thank you. And they all said, Let us celebrate our newborn king. The birth of Jesus brought hope to many people. He grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with both God and man. He was the Son of God, sent to save all those who believe in him from their sins. Jesus is truly the reason for the season. And he is the gift that keeps on giving. So in this season, remember that God gave his only son just to come and save us from our sins. Yeah. Always have a heart that desires to have love and give love to all of mankind. Yeah. Giving gifts to others is what our Father has asked of us. For our God has given us an everlasting love that will live and save always and forever. Wish
Let's give God a hand. Come on, I think we can be just a little bit better than that. Come on, let's give God. Come on, the biggest praise that you got. Come on, give it up. Anybody in the world that knows that he's worthy? I said, we got anybody that knows he's worthy? To be praised. Come on, lift those hands right where you are. Just open your mouth and just tell God, God, I thank you for protecting me from danger seen and unseen. And God, because you kept me, because you provided for me, because you pulled me through. God, I open my mouth now and I tell you, thank you. Now come on, all over this room, somebody beside me. All I have grateful hearts and grateful spirits. Come on, if you don't do it, do it. Find your own self. Touch somebody on your road and tell them he's been good to me. Y'all touching the road, somebody. Boy, I wish I really felt like it. I said, touch somebody, even if it's your own self. And say, out of all I've been through, God has been good to me. Now one more time, do it for yourself, do it for God. Come on, clap your hands. For somebody who ain't no God to do it, God said, I'm already doing it. He said, I just want you to act like it's already done. He said, you wait on it to happen. He said, but it's in the process, it's in the process. For those of us that can operate by faith, can y'all do me one favor? If you wait on God to do something for you, come on, clap your hands like he's already done. I said, clap your hands like you done already pulled your foot. Like you done already bought you out. Come on, clap your hands 
going to need y'all to keep being good participants for about another 15 minutes or so. Is that all right? Is that all right? So I had to put this together in a short time. Short time. And your girl, I like to have my stuff together. Meaning I start about two months ahead working on a, a message if I got to preach and or teach or talk or whatever. And, and I go over it and over it because I know me. I know the nerves that'll pop up. I didn't get to do that. Pastor told me last week. And here I stand. <laughs> So if y'all help me, I'm going to help you. We won't make it too hard for each other. Amen. Amen. I hope I got some scriptures. I don't have any. That's going to be tough. Do y'all got y'all about? Y'all got y'all phone? Because I wanted y'all to help me. Goodness. Sorry. Um, Ephesians 2 and 8. Ephesians 2 and 8. None of these scriptures we're going to see that. So be prepared to have your phone or if you know the Bible, you can flip, flip. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For we are God's handiwork. Yes, yes. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Amen. Are y'all there yet? which God prepared in advance for us to do. Y'all got that? Let me read to you the Amplified Version while you're still kind of looking over yours. It says, for we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used, for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking the path which he set so that he would walk, so that we would walk in them, living a good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. For a topic and subtopic, I have a couple things. Number one, you were created to do good works. Amen. Amen. And my subtopic is understanding your assignment and fulfilling your purpose in God. So there's a slang term, I mean, is that how you say it? I've been to ask Eddie how does Lauren how to say it? Is it me? Okay, thank you, Ma. There's a slang term, I mean, going around all over social media, on Facebook, Twitter, if you use any of TikTok, Instagram, that reference a particular individual saying either she understood the assignment, he understood the assignment, or some personally say, I understood. I understood the assignment. Just yesterday, one of my Facebook friends, she had uh, laid out this beautiful uh, brunch, and um, her name is Mandy, so y'all call if y'all need it, but it was beautiful, it looked good. And what she put at the end of the little uh, number sign, she said, I understood the assignment. So some of y'all are looking, the young folks, they're okay, but some of y'all are looking like, what is she talking about? Understood the assignment. So it's a slang term of mean used to praise someone who's going above and beyond to do a good job. Um, the Urban Dictionary says that it's used when somebody is giving it 110%. Not just 100, but 110% when they're going above and beyond to do uh, what is expected. So for some of our youth this morning, I'll have to say they they did good. I would give them an A. I would put a seal of approval on what they did and what Jazz did in such a short amount of time. Amen? So now that I got some of y'all attention, at least the young folks, it's my mission to spark an inward desire with you and you that while you have this brief time here on this earth, to live out the assignment God gave, gave to you at your best. And to walk in your purpose. And not just walk in it, but go above and beyond what's expected. So when somebody hear your life story one day, they too would say that you, that you understood the assignment. Every one of you seated here, 
in this church today have a God-given divine assignment. Amen. Regardless of how you feel about it, God created you with purpose and established you to walk in your divine assignment. It's up to you to know what God has called you to do. And it may not be one particular assignment, it may be multiple assignments. That's how I feel about my life. God didn't just put me here for one particular thing. Amen. Amen. He did to worship and praise him. But I live and through the life that I live, I'm finishing and still working on multiple assignments. Amen. So in the Bible, we see young men, old men, women, even you, uh, fulfilling their God-given purpose. So there's so many that I could talk about, but of course time would not permit um, me to go through all of those in the Bible that went above and beyond and gave it 110%. But God spoke into their lives. And Jazz said something earlier. She said that the youths were willing, ready, and obedient. That's the, that's the term right here, Elder Harris used a lot. And that's what you got to be. Number one, you got to be obedient. You got to be willing. And you are able, because he made you able, to answer the call of God. So let's take a look at a few of God's chosen ones. That if I could sum up a social media post about them, it would say, they. All right. What about Moses? So let's turn. Exodus 3. And we're going to skip down through that text. But if you got to go to Exodus 3. So I'm going to jump down to verse 4. It says, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called Moses from within the bush. Moses, Moses. Then the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. Drivers, I am concerned about their suffering. Jump down to nine. It says, and now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Ten says, so now go, is what God told Moses. Go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people the Israelites out of Egypt. The first thing Moses did is what many of us do. He made an excuse. He said he felt inadequate in his speech. Nothing wrong with those feelings. I just voiced to y'all, I felt inadequate this morning. And with my nerves, a little anxiety, and so did, so did Moses. So it's nothing wrong with that. But, the inadequacies come from within ourselves. If I'm by myself. But you know what? I'm not by myself up here. I have the good Lord, God's power, and the Holy Spirit that's helping me to stand before you all and talk to you all. It's not by my power. So when you have the Holy Spirit, God, and he'll send you some help as well when you're trying to work on an assignment. Just remember that. So you can do all things with God. Moses was, he lived to be 120 years old, but when he took on this assignment, he was 80 years old. So I say that to say, just because you're elderly, don't mean God can't use you. Just because you're young, don't mean God can't use you. If he said and spoke something into your life, don't give up on it. Trust him for what he said he would do. Moses accomplished his assignment of delivering the Israelites from bondage by following God's direction. And that's what you're going to do too. We can say that Moses, he did. What about Joshua? God created Joshua for the assignments to lead the Israelites across the Jordan River into the promised land. The one thing I like about this, he gave, when, when God said he wants something done, he wanted it done. He initially gave this assignment to Moses. Well, we know that Moses didn't make it to the promised land, but he did finish the assignment of bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt from bondage. So when God got something he wanted done, 
If he if you don't get it done, somebody else gonna do it. He's gonna use somebody else. So God got so God uh, created Joshua for the assignment of leading the Israelites across the Jordan River. So look at Joshua. If you can get there. Joshua 1, the very first book. Joshua 1. So it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, a hey, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you, talking to Joshua, and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I'm going to skip down to five. It says, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I would never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. God said he's going to be with you. You're not going to be alone. It may feel like some days when you're trying to get it done, you are all by yourself. Family, you're looking around, where are they? You would think they would be there to help you, but you weren't there by yourself. But he said, you feel like you're by yourself, but you're not. God said, he'll be with you. And he told you what to do. Be strong, be courageous. Not in your power, not in, but in his power and by his might. So we can say, we know the, uh, the children of Israel we reached the promised land. So we can say that Joshua successfully led the Israelites into their God-given promised land. So he what? All right. What about David? He was a man after God's heart. God created David to shepherd and be a warrior to the children of Israel. If you got time, look at 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7, 8 through 9. Second Samuel, number 7, verses 8 through 9. We'll read some more. So it says, Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pastor, <laughs> from tending flock, and appointed you ruler over my people. I don't know how that sounds to y'all, but going from pastor to ruler, from a pastor to a ruler, that means something. Nine says, I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all of your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth. We can see in this text there are some uh, similarities in the sense that God told Moses he would be with him. Joshua, I'll be with you. And here he, again, he tells David, he said, I'll be with you wherever you go. And David, God was, uh, took care of David and cut him uh, from all of his enemy. We know Saul was trying to kill him, and he was hiding and running, but God took care of him in the midst of all of that. First Kings, you don't have to turn, I'm going to read this right quick. First Kings 2, 10 through 11 says, Then David rested with his ancestors, and he was buried in the city of David. David reigned 40 years over Israel, 7 years in Hebron, and 33 in Jerusalem. David was called to rule and reign, and he did what God told him to do. He what? I'll write it in. I'm going to skip on down and go to what about Jeremiah? Jeremiah, you can turn to Jeremiah 1, but this one that I'm going to read, most of us know it. Jeremiah 1, uh, Jeremiah was called to be created by God to be a prophet in the earth. 
So if we had Jeremiah 1, I'm going to read it to you. It said, the word of the Lord came to me. This is Jeremiah talking, saying, before I form you in your mother's womb, I knew you. God says, before you were even made, I already knew you. And he already had assignment on your life. Amen. And if you don't know what that assignment is, or you're not trying to figure out what it is, that should worry you. God conscious, your, your conscience should be bothered by that. Because God said that, I, I knew you. I already knew that I called you to do this. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart, is what he said. So you wonder why sometimes your life don't match up with everybody else. You can't go where everybody else can't go on. You can't do what everybody else is doing. You ain't got what everybody else got. You can't buy what everybody else buys. Because you're paying your tithes, you're doing this, you're doing... Don't, don't compare yourself to others. When you try to do that, you, you, you minimize your opportunities from walking in your divine purpose. Just let God take care of you and do what he told you to do and don't worry about the other folk. He said, I appointed you as the prophet to the nations. Sovereign Lord, I said this is what Jeremiah said. I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. I don't know how old Jeremiah was, but he says that he was he was young. And he said he was too young. But this is what the Lord said to him in verse 7 of Jeremiah 1. Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send to you and say whatever I command you to. Don't be afraid, as young folks say. Don't be scared. Here it is again we see. God says, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Yes. So even being at a young age, my young folks, God has given you an assignment, has called you and given you work to do. Just say, Jasmaya, Naya. God has a calling on your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you. Yeah, you. She's pointing to her chest. He has a calling on you. And he's got work for you to do. Even at a young age. So when you're wondering why, like sometimes you might not fit in or sometimes you can't hang with certain people. It's because God has an assignment on your life. He has something he wants you to do. And he knows if you're over here doing that, ooh-wee, you're going to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and miss what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? So we know Jeremiah was very young. But I read last night that says uh, he lasted, He Jeremiah ministry lasted for at least uh, during the time of five kings of Judah. He wrote two Old Testament books, Jeremiah, of course, and Lamentations. And it talked about how Jeremiah's life, out of probably all the people that I just talked about, had one of the most difficult and trial-filled uh, existence of the Old Testament prophets. Because of what he saw, what he preached, and suffered, he felt so deeply sorrowful for the fallen condition of Judea. And so it hurt him to see God's people doing what they were doing and how they were living. And so many call Jeremiah, he's known to be the weeping prophet. He was tempted to give up. But he knew he had to keep going because there was a call on his life. You too, you're going to want to stop. You're going to want to quit. Out of all my assignments, I 
can assure you, there were some days that I just said, I, I, can, I don't know if I can do it. I just don't feel like I can. Lord, what do I do? But you don't give up. Jeremiah didn't quit. You heard what I told you he did. So Jeremiah. He what? All right. We're getting there, y'all. What about Jonah, the preacher? Jonah 1, 1 through 2. You can turn there if you can. If you don't, we'll re I'll read it to you. So Jonah was a preacher that God had called to go to Nineveh, to preach to him because of all the wickedness in Nineveh. We all know Jonah, Jonah did just like many of us. He didn't really do exactly what God said when God told him to do it. Just that simple. He didn't do what he was supposed to be doing. Took him a little minute. So sometimes it's going to take, take you a little while. So what I'm saying is, don't let that make it stop you just because you're going down this path and you decide to go down this path and you know God told you to go over here. So it took him a minute, but God, Jonah did what God told him to do. Jonah 1 and 1 2 says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. And John 3, Jonah 3 10 says, I'm skipping. When God saw what they did, the Nineveh people, and how they turned their, from their evil ways, he relented. And did not bring destruction that he had threatened. Because of Jonah taking God's message to Nineveh, Nineveh repented and God relented from the disaster that he was going to bring on Nineveh. So what's my point in bringing up Jonah? Your assignment may save somebody's life. You are that important, and your work, your, your, what God created to do is that important. Your work may save somebody's life. And if you don't do it, if you don't go, they may die. Yeah. And not just die physically, but it may be a spiritual death. So don't take your assignments lightly. So Jonah, what? Amen. So there's another preacher that I know personally, and he deserves to be mentioned today. Of all these great men that I just talked about, his name may not be in the Bible. It may not be on the Walk of Fame in California, wherever it is, but uh, one day it's going to be in the Lamb Book of Life. God created Deldrick Joel sure <laughs> to teach and preach the word of God he appointed him to build and lead he's led in the rebuilding of three not one not two but three of God's temples rebuilding but most importantly he saved He's, he's led so many lost souls yeah. to Christ. Yeah. Through his teaching and his preaching. So I believe, New G, y'all can stand with me and say that our pastor, Deldre, he understood the understood the assignment. Now all these men that I just talked about did excellent, did wonderful, carrying out their assignment, walking in their divine purpose, but I would be remiss if I did not mention a woman of God. She had one of the greatest assignments ever given in the earth, not to a man, but a woman, because only a woman could carry out this task. Mary. 
Mary was created to bring forth our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Luke 1, 28, 38, and I'm going to read a portion of it. The angel, because the, the children have already went over and said, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And that's what's going to help some of you all today. It's not going to be because of anything, but it's just going to be because of the favor of God on your life that you will be able to carry out some of your assignments. She was troubled, as we saw with Leah and what she said. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. And Mary said, how will this be? As y'all remember, Leah said, I'm a virgin. How can this be? And look what the angel answered and said. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born. When I read that, there's two things in there that make miracles happen. Um, in here, in this instance where Jesus was born, but even in, in every day. The Holy Spirit and the power of God. Yeah. You put those things together, miracles will happen. Miracles will, will come out. When I think back and I think about where I came from, this little black shy girl that grew up on the Royston farm, and where I am today, my ability to stand and speak when I dealt with anxiety to the point that I felt like I was going to pass out when I got up in front of people or just walked in front of somebody. But here I am today. Amen. You know what I call that to be? Nobody but the power of God. And nobody but hope the Holy Spirit within me leading and guiding me. So the angel told her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And for your assignment, some of the tasks that you're trying to do, you're going to have to have the Holy Spirit. You, you think you're wise, you think you know, but you're going to have to go to God and ask him to guide you, lead you, direct you to keep you from putting your own self in there and messing up and making a mistake. And that's the power of God. That means you're going to have to spend some time in prayer, that you're going to have to get alone and hit, to be able to hear. Out of all those people that I talked to, talked about, all of them had specific directions from God. If you're too busy and too running around and just trying to live life, trying to get all this and add to what you got and compare it to other folk, if you don't stop sometime and just hear from God, that's going to be your life. You're just going to keep running and running and running and running and running. When God got something for you to do, that will require you to do all that. So that was a, that was a great assignment. One of the greatest. But there's one more, and we'll close out this message. One of the greatest assignments that God spoke in the earth is when he gave and sent his only son, Jesus, for one purpose, and that was to save mankind, as Maya said, when she told you the meaning of Christmas. Jesus came, his birth, his death, all was centered around saving mankind. John 3, 16, as my read, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Luke 2, 1 says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, Christ the Lord. No other person, no other man could deal with God, what Jesus did. Number one, because they all sinned. 
Jesus was totally unique. He indeed was the only begotten Son of God. And he had one thing that he needed done, one assignment. And that was to do his Father's will and to save mankind. And John 6, 3, 8, I'm going to read it so we can finish. He says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of who, who sent me. If we remember Christ on the cross, he said, not my will. Not my will. So sometimes with your assignments, you're going to have to say, Father, it's not my will. It's not my will. You may not want to go over there and help them folks that you know mistreated your family. You may not want to pick that person up that you know when your car was down, they wouldn't answer the phone. Now that you got a new car, you may not want to go and pray for the people that you know lied on you. You may not want to go and give your money to the poor and versus going by a new purse. You may not want to go and help and pray for those that are sick. Again, like I said, they may have wronged you or mistreated you, but you have to say, it's not my will. Yes. When you're doing your assignments, you have to take yourself out the way. Amen. And even though some of these assignments, just like what Jesus went through, is going to be rough. What he went through on the cross was tough. We sing about it, celebrate about it, but he suffered in our stead. He suffered for us. But he said, not my will, but let thy will be done. My last text says, it's 2 Corinthians 9 and 15. You don't have to turn it. I'm going to read to you what Paul said. Paul said, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Amen. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Nobody understood the assignment like Jesus. We can all stand on our feet. I need y'all to stand for this one. Stand on your feet and say, Jesus, he understood the assignment. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all, let's celebrate Jesus. He is the reason for the season. Amen. You may as well put your hands together make a little bit of more noise. Let me hear from my youth. Can I hear you, youth? Let me hear you, you. Amen. We can celebrate Jesus. Jesus came to this earth so that you can be, so that you would have a right to the tree of life, that you don't have to go to hell. But he saved us. He freed us. So we are thankful. We are grateful for all that he's done. And we celebrate him today. We love him, as Maya said, because he loved us. Everything he did was out of love. He came and walked this earth.
y'all come on give her a hand. Come on, do better than that. Amen. Point if somebody needs you and say, I understand your assignment. I understand your assignment. Amen. Amen. The door of the church is open. We extend an invitation now to Christian discipleship. There may be somebody in this room who don't have a church home. There may be somebody in this room who's looking for a savior. If that's you, we ask that you would stand and we can lead you to Christ. Amen. Look like everybody in the house is saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, because you're saved, come on, give God a hand. God a hand. Now can we do this? Can we give Jesus the greatest gift ever given to us? Come on, give him a hand. Come on and praise him. Amen. Or if it had not been for him. Amen. Amen. So many times we get caught up in all of this other stuff. And I ain't got time to argue with nobody about nothing. But the mere fact that Jesus alone, how many know Jesus alone is enough? Amen. If it had not been for Jesus, amen, where would we be? Amen. Tiara, how many little kids we got in here so we can go? So we can go? Amen. We're trying to get y'all out. Huh? What we say? 17 and under? 17 and under. Y'all stand up one real quick for me. How are you, Jack? 25? You missed about nine years. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, how are you? Huh? Oh, I thought you were 17, 18. <laughs> Y'all come in for just one second so we can get ready to go. Sorry, come on. You're not, you're not 18 yet, Jeremy. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, Bert, you got your wallet with you. <laughs> Jazz. What, how, how many we got? Okay, do you move so fast? Boy, I think it's two of you right here. <laughs> Y'all come on, give these young people a hand for me. Y'all gonna sit out, y'all ain't getting no, no more now. When I get to y'all go ahead, I'm gonna give you three, yeah. Come on. Thank y'all. Y'all look so nice. Hey, my buddy. Leah, you let me tell me, don't pass you back. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all all right? Good to see you. Here you go, here you go, man. Thank you. Here you go, little man. You know, you got a phone.
uh, on the motherboard and we want to. She said she's too young to be on the motherboard. Amen. That's it. Let's get ready to go, y'all. Come on. Y'all come on, grab your hands one time. Come on, let's get ready to give too. Several ways you can give. You can text it. 662 6394 Go to the website, www.newgenesisob.com. For all of you, look directly in front of you. See that all of you are in the box. That way, all you. Let us pray our Father in heaven. God, we thank you for your gift. God bless and multiplies only you can. In Jesus' name. Amen.
not just in this place, God, but as they go out this place and they go into their lives, as they grow up, Father God, touch them. God, just as you touched David and you called them him and you appointed him, you calling them and you appointed them even at a young age, Father God. So let them not lose sight of their calling in you, Father. And not just the youth, but even the old, the elderly, Father God, all that are here today. Dear Father, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. We pray, God, that it would help somebody, that it would lead somebody. God, we thank you, oh God, for Pastor, for his healing. And God, we believe in for full restoration and wholeness, that he'll reach wholeness, Father God. So God, we continue to pray for him and we thank you for him, God. God, we continue to pray for those that have been affected by the storms who don't even have homes to go to. And some of us are worried about a gift. Some don't have clothes to put on their back. So Father God, have mercy. Please, Father. And God, it may be somebody here in this place today that's crying out to you for mercy, grace. Don't know what to do. Don't know where to go. I don't know who they are, but you know them, Father. God, in this week, in this day, speak to them, direct them, order their steps, Father. Give them specific direction just as you gave Moses and as you gave Joshua and as you gave David. And God, just as you did with them, God, be with us. Father God, we know you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us, but sometimes, Father God, we feel alone. We feel like we're trying to do it by ourselves. But help God. Remind us, God, that we're not alone. God, as we leave from this place, but never from your presence, as we go into this season, God, continue to let us think on all those things that Maya said and that we remember that this whole time of year is about love. And that you, Father, gave us the greatest gift of all. That you loved us so that you sent your son, and we thank you, Father. Be with us, protect us, keep us safe, and bring us back at this place when you have appointed for us to be here. We thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you, Youth Department. Thank you, Praise Team.